Yes, until now, alien invasions have been the stuff of Hollywood blockbusters like that and conspiracy theories. But according to the world's top alien hunter, it might not be long before we find ourselves in a real-life Independence Day. Seth Shostak's stark warning recently prompted this memorable Daily Star front page. Seth, a senior astronomer at the famous Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, where they scan the skies for alien life, believes that extraterrestrials will invade Earth within just 20 years and warns that in a real-life War of the Worlds, we're definitely losers. Seth and his SETI colleagues have been lobbying the UN for years to adopt an international protocol for dealing with little green men, warning that if they want to flatten Swindon or land in Trafalgar Square, we'll be helpless because national governments don't take the threat seriously enough. But so far, their pleas have fallen on deaf ears. So is it time we start treating aliens like a genuine threat and made a plan for first contact? Well, I'm delighted to say Seth is joining me now on Uncancelled. And Seth, your proposition here is that there's a possibility that at some point we may have to deal with extraterrestrials. And as an international community, we're simply not prepared in any way for their arrival. Well, uh, actually, Dan, it's slightly different. I don't want to impugn the accuracy of the Star newspaper, but they kind of twisted what I said. So uh, well, let me tell you what, what I do think is... Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, do you have clearance for this? I mean, does the FBI have you in top secret clearance? Because what I'm about to say, nobody else should hear. It's only this. What I predicted, and I backed it up with a bet of a cup of coffee, that within 20 years, we will detect the presence of extraterrestrials. I didn't say that they were going to come here and flatten Swindon, or in this country, they probably go for Los Angeles. <laughs> they always go for Los Angeles. Okay, by me, I live in Northern California. <laughs> no, uh, but your point, I guess, which I was most interested in, is that, in fact, governments aren't prepared. We don't discuss this. We, we, we don't think it's an important enough threat. But, but are you saying it should be on the agenda of international organisations and governments? Well, I certainly agree that we ought to talk about what the impact might be. Look, if they're not here, if what we find is a, a signal coming from, who knows, maybe 50 or 100 light years away, you know, there's no danger, just as there's no danger to the viewers of this TV show who might tune it in. They don't have to worry that you're going to, you know, try and cause them harm later in the day because you don't know that they've tuned in. It would be the same if we picked up a signal tonight, next week, next year, that proves that there's somebody out there. It doesn't mean they're here, of course. That's a different situation. And uh, if that were to happen, I mean, I, I really would uh, try and get out of town. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. And, and when you talk about uh, how quickly aliens potentially could come to Earth, this was really fascinating to me. You say, actually, it could take a very long time because they would only have been able to start picking up radio uh, signals since after World War II. Yes, that's right. I mean, if you, you know, you go to the movies and it looks like they're just uncountable numbers of other civilizations who have nothing better to do than spend the money to come to Earth and, you know, uh, wreak havoc and destruction. But think about it. How would they know we're even here? Well, they could only know that, really. They could only know about Homo sapiens if they picked up our television, our FM radio, right? Something like that. And those signals have only really been going out into space since the Second World War. So what is that, 70, 75 uh, years ago? If they're farther than 75 light years away from us, they don't even know we're here. So I, I really don't imagine they'd want to wish us harm because they, they don't know about us. But if they're, you know, closer than that and maybe less than half that distance, then there's been enough time for those early broadcasts to reach them. Maybe they decide that they don't like the programming for whatever reason and send their rockets to Earth and, you know, just flatten the place. Yeah, which is obviously worrying. Look, I've got my superstar panel uh, with me to discuss this, Seth. Tonight, they are uh, the Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper Benjamin Butterworth, and the social commentator Esther Krakow. Now, Carol Malone, you believe in aliens, don't you, like me? Well, you I kind of believe...
believe in the sightings in this country, and Seth might be, um, he might want to know that w the government disbanded the group that actually monitors sightings in this country. It no longer exists. We had someone on the programme recently that was telling us about that. But, uh, but Seth, why would you think that they would be, any aliens would be hostile to us, that they would come and flatten us? Would they not maybe want to come and learn from us? Or tell me, or make, well, make us better. Yeah, Carol, well, you, you, I, I admire your optimism, but it, you have to look at it this way. If you could go back and uh, visit the Neanderthals, what would your interest be in doing that, right? Because any aliens that know about us, let alone any aliens that could actually come here, they're way beyond us technologically. So to say that they would come here to learn from us would be no, like you saying, no, you know, meant, I want to... And I meant us learn from them. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering why you assume that if they came here, they would be hostile and they'd want to flatten us. Well, I don't. But Hollywood does. Yeah. And the reason they do is because it makes a more interesting story. I mean, if they come here only to read poetry or, you know, play with their video games, that's not very interesting, right? But they might just come to look at us to see how we operate, to see and just to come know know <laughs> how far <laughs> ahead they Never are mind. from us. <laughs> no? Esther Craig, well, what's your take? Um, this is, okay, I don't like horror films because I feel like people in horror films, for some reason, the scripts always make the people so stupid. Right, they hear something is going wrong in their house, and instead of jumping outside with a cricket bat ready to rumble or you know doing something sensible, they run into their closet or they go and investigate the weird noises. Do you not think that we're looking for trouble by looking for aliens? Well, I, I, no, I don't actually, because looking doesn't involve any risk whatsoever. Right. How do we look? I mean, you know, what sort of experiments does the Institute where I work here, the SETI Institute, what sort of experiments do they do? If you ever saw the movie Contact, you have a good idea. Jodie Foster using big antennas to try and eavesdrop on alien Why signals. Need to look, Why can't we just let them? What if they don't want us looking? What if it's like we have a peephole in their houses and they just don't feel comfortable with us looking? Why can't we just leave them alone? No. They can leave us alone. And no one gets but, but, but how does look? But if they don't know that we're looking, how does that but affect creepy. them? It's oh, well, creepy. Well, okay, but they're, they're not looking that. in their it's house. Creepy. Maybe we're invading their privacy. <laughs> Maybe, you know, it's a form of harassment. Right. You get, you're getting daft now. Well, look. Okay, ben, <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's bring yeah. Benjamin yeah. Yeah. Harassment. on this, Benjamin. <laughs> you you, uh, you well, might I'm go just... to Australia and look at the termite mounds, right? And is, is that creepy yeah, for the termites? That you're looking at them? I probably won't. Well, Benjamin. Look, I mean, Seth, I'm glad that you say it'll take them a long time to get here. Probably even longer if insulate Britain getting in, in the way. Uh, the question <laughs> I want to ask is, uh, I'm a cynic about this, right? You know, for a start, I'm not convinced that Swindon is the Los Angeles of Britain. That, <laughs> that was quite a claim. That's so sad. Uh, How <laughs> dare you? It's a great play. <laughs> but you said, you know, we hear lots of these claims of people thinking they've seen UFOs. Just how much of that stuff that people believe they're witnessing do you think is real or plausible? Um, in a, with a short answer, I'd say none of it, actually. Okay. Because, look, there are about a third of the population of Britain, but also a third of the population of the U.S. So what is that, 100 million people who think that the aliens have come here and they're flying around, they're cruising our airspace, otherwise doing nothing. They don't help any of our problems. They don't cause any problems. They don't hurt anybody. They do nothing except precipitate a lot of television shows. That's about all they do. I mean, that's a long trip to do very little. But Seth, you said you wanted an international protocol to deal with an alien invasion. I mean, what could we do if they decided to come and wipe us out? I know, we out? were sitting dark. What would we do? Yeah, no, good point, Carol, because there really is nothing you could do. Yeah. This is the, the mistake that the movies all make, right? The aliens come here and, OK, they don't flatten Swindon. What is it? Maybe Slough. I don't know what they're going to flatten. But whatever it is, right, that we take them on, right? We set up the Air Force take and we take on, on these guys. Wait, and no on. slough and, jokes, and, Benjamin Butterworth. No slough jokes. Yeah, but how do we do take we, them on? Here? Do we, like, conscribe? OK, how about a hear no evil, see no evil policy? Well, I don't know about you. Stop going on about ignoring them. I just don't want to know. If they're if coming, I don't know, then we can't don't want to ignore know. them. Yes, we can. Absolutely. We so, can absolutely ignore them. How do we stop them? them? Final question to Carol. How do we stop them if they come? What do we have to do on Earth to get ready for them? 
Well, look, the only uh, sensible suggestion I ever heard for that was negotiate. Maybe you could negotiate. I'm not sure they'd come here just to, to, to wreak havoc and destruction. But in case they do, because you don't know, my recommendation to you, Carol, is uh, grab a couple of frozen pizzas and plenty of drink. <laughs> Uh, grab your significant other and head for the hills. That's what I would recommend. I'm just going to ignore oh, that. I'm going to put in headphones. Sack. I'm going to ignore the them. The senior astronomer at the famous <laughs> SETI Institute. That is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute. Thank you so much for joining us on Uncancelled. Look, we've got to discuss the possibility of aliens. We do it all on GB News. <laughs> Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.